Hello, movie friends. Welcome back to the show. Anthony here. And James here. It is movie news number 42, and it's also Oscar Sunday. So tonight, the Academy Awards, Awards will be premiering and, and showcasing on TV. And we're doing a fun watch party on our new Discord that all $10 and $25 tier patrons have access to. If you haven't gotten that link yet, it's on the Patreon. Or if you want to just DM us if you are a $10, $25 patron, we'll send you the link so you can join the watch party tonight with us. It's going to be fun. We're starting a little before the show starts. So the show starts at 5, so we'll be on the Discord by like 5 p.m. Pacific time. Yeah. So that's 8 p.m. Eastern time. I think it's 7 Central time. I think so, yeah. Six o'clock, whatever the other time zone is in America. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody knows. Uh, this box office last weekend was pretty solid. The Batman made six, $36 million. In Third weekend. Up to yeah. $600 million over that global. Uncharted made $7.8 million. X made $4.3 million, the new film from Ty West. And Dog's still making money. Dog is crushing. Dollars. Crushing. And I think Channing Tatum is just proving he's still he's a box office draw in addition to Sandra Bullock because the new film The Lost City was released this weekend. So Thursday it made two point five million on the previews, eleven point five million on Friday, which is a lot. And then so they're projecting a thirty million dollar weekend, which is very solid for a romantic comedy adventure. It came out at a perfect time. There's nothing like it in that genre out right now. Yeah, and then everything everywhere all at once is getting its wide release starting this weekend. So definitely go check out that latest film from a24 i saw x the other a24 film which is a horror film directed and written by ty west i loved it so much i'm a big fan of his work i if you like indie horror films i suggest his work especially the innkeepers and the house of the devil i will be doing an audio review of it this week i'm looking forward to seeing uh, everything everywhere all at once it looks like a lot of fun in a very trippy visually stunning film so We'll probably get into the theater next week to see it. Plus, it's a multiverse, bruh. Multiverse. In a past so hot right now. <laughs> episodes this past week, we did Jackie Chan, Actor Spotlight on Monday. Anthony did a review audio version of The Skin I Live In. And then we also had our Harry Potter Father Figures episode on Thursday. That was a great one. Lots they all of, were great. Lots of fun. Yeah. Uh, first bit of news, Moon Knight, the new MCU TV show, is premiering this week on Wednesday, March 30th. They had the premiere uh, this past weekend. I'm very excited to check this out. Huge fans of Oscar Isaac, and I'm hoping a more adult version of these MCU movies. It seems like this character is a little darker, tackling mental health, as well as being a superhero and a hero at the same time. And also, Warner Brothers released the deleted scene from the Batman that featured the Joker. Aside from the little tease at the end of the film, there was a scene halfway through the film, if you haven't seen it. It's not really a spoiler because it's all over the internet, but there is a scene where Joker and the Batman share a t some time together. I won't tell you what it is if you haven't seen it, but it's really terrific. Barry Cogan performed... It's actually uh, pronounced Keoghan. Keoghan? Keoghan. Keoghan? Yeah. Barry Keoghan. I like that. I think, I'm pretty sure Celtic. it's something like that. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's, it's Irish, mm -hmm. Celtic. But he did a terrific job as the Joker. I like his take. His take and his performance was extremely disturbing. I wish they had kept it in the scene. Also, the look of the Joker was really unique for film versions of the character. Uh, they went very different and very extreme. And they really pushed the envelope for making something that is super disturbing, but just on the PG-13 line right before it hits R-rated territory. So I thought they did an excellent job with the character design, and the makeup, and the voice as well. Hold on. I found a pronunciation on YouTube let's hear of it. Barry's name. Let's, let's hear what it is. Everyone listening. Here, here it comes. While it's loading. Oh, here we go. Ready? Ready. That's not correct at all. Not at all. Barry Keon. 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 Barry Keon. Keon. All right. Barry so Barry Keon. Keon. Barry Keon. It's a, a lot of those cool Celtic names like Sorsha yeah. and uh, Ewan. Mm -hmm. Um... Aoife, too, it's another cool Irish name, a fan of ours. Now, Joker's origin, Matt Reeves released a little snippet, a little anecdote about his background. So he says, to quote him, it's like the Phantom of the Opera. He has a congenital disease where he can't stop smiling, and it's horrific. His face is half covered throughout most of the film. It's not about the. It's not about some version where he falls into a vat of chemicals and his face is distorted, or what Christopher Nolan did with makeup where there's some mystery to how to get these scars carved into his face. What if this guy from birth had this disease and he was cursed? He had the smile that people stared at, that it was grotesque and terrifying. Even as a child, people looked at him with horror. And his response to say was, okay, so a joke was played on me and this was his nihilistic take on the world. 
Really interesting. Super interesting. Interesting. Can't wait to see him in the next one. There's a new boxing movie coming out. It's called The Survivor, starring Ben Foster, one of the most underrated actors working today. We're huge fans of his work, and I know a lot of you are as well. It's a biographical drama about Harry Haft, the real-life boxer, who survived Auschwitz concentration camp as a bare-knuckle boxer for Nazi entertainment at Auschwitz, fighting fellow Jews, then he becomes a professional boxer in America once he's freed. Fascinating story. It's real life, I never too. heard of something like Me that. Me neither. I never yeah. heard of it either. Incredible. So that's, that's horrible. I mean, Auschwitz is yeah. the, the worst thing that could have happened to people, and then to, the fact that they had them fighting each other as bare-knuckle bo- boxers for their entertainment is terrible. Yeah, it's awful, but I, I, that's a fascinating story, and Ben Foster, one of the best actors working today, so I'm excited to see that film. And it's sure. a complex character because, you know, he fought other Jews to get out and to maintain mm-hmm. his freedom, so he's actually got, like, a lot of criticism in the film it looks like from other jews who survived Mm -hmm. that's a great great take on it next up the halo tv series officially premiered on paramount plus and it broke the the viewing records for the streaming platform becoming its most watched original series within its first 24 hours i had a feeling it would because they haven't had something very strong come out yet Um, i haven't checked it out yet um i want to watch it because we were huge halo fans so if anyone's seen this let us know how it is the reviews are kind of so so it's like around really six and a half on imdb ratings stuff like that okay 60 percent something on on run tomatoes and we also don't have paramount plus yeah but we can we can get it we got some sites yeah We got some sites we can use. (laughs) Yeah, people have been uh, sending me some sites. All right, uh, the next bit of news is really a downer. This is the start of conglomerate mega corporations just destroying our heroes of the past. Uh, So James Bond, now that it's officially owned by Amazon and MGM Studios is owned by Amazon, there's a new James Bond reality series called 007's Road to a Million, just announced at Amazon Prime Video. Sounds so dumb. So this is a competition-based series that will use the world surrounding Agent 007 as its basis. 007's Road to a Million will see a crew of hopefuls race against each other to win a $1.3 million cash prize. Paired off into groups of two, not only will the contestants face off against one another for the giant sum of money, but they will also see the world as they show plans to drop them in unique James Bond callback locations to carry out their challenges. So it's basically Amazing Race with James Bond as the theme, and this is really disappointing. I figured stuff like this would start happening, and here we go. And also, it shows the the power of reality television on streaming services and how many views they're getting. The first thing Amazon does with the James Bond properties makes a reality competition show. This, this is just the start of the dilution of James yeah. Bond. Get this, ready. This it's is also very sad. I mean, th- I... This is not what I was expecting. I thought they were going to make TV series of the world spinoffs and stuff, which I didn't like either. But the fact that they're doing reality game shows with the James Bond brand is just, it's very sad. I'm sure Linda Broccoli's like, yeah. uh, this is what you guys told crap. me. Crap. Yeah. Uh, I did not know that was going to happen. That's what well, happens. Well, I mean, she's not in charge of MGM, just the Bond property. MGM owns Bond. She runs Bond, but like she didn't have any say on the deal. Because the Amazon bought MGM, the giant studio. Gotcha. So she's like, she had no choice. No, no I'm just saying she's probably like, oh, yeah. this is not cool. Oh, yeah, exactly. Because like I said, it's just going to weaken the property in general, I think. Oh, my it's God. It's going to yeah. turn into a roller coaster ride. Because it's always been like a crown jewel of cinema, of quality. It has a high standard, especially the last 20 years. Prestige. Yeah. Prestige. Prestige. Yeah. And it's like. See you later. Oh, man. Wow. <laughs> what a disappointment. <laughs> Within a week. Oof. All right, back to another espionage franchise that is not a reality TV show. <laughs> <laughs> Our boy Tom Cruise is finishing up rap, has almost finished wrapping his film Mission Impossible 7. Then he's going to start filming Mission Impossible 8. And rumors have it that the budget for number seven has reached $300 million. The studio initially fought him on inflating the budget more because it was already, it started out as a $250 million budget, but tacking on an extra 50 mil. He actually had um, a lawyers they kind of negotiated like the terms to finally agree to let him get that extra 50 million dollars to hit a budget of 300 mil just for the first movie and the second one i'm sure will be just around as much but he says the budget inflation is because of the inflation of the american dollar over the last two years which is a legitimate excuse it has risen so i can see why the budget inflated so much but also this movie is going to make a billion dollars so i think it's a safe bet for for the studio and a lot of the sets are going to be used for both films. So I'm sure the second film is going to cost as much as the first one. And they'll probably be, it's like a two-part series, yeah. it seems like. I'm sure there'll be some recurring characters, but I bet the storyline is like a new villain with both films. And yeah. they're connected somehow. So I think they're going yeah. back to 
to back. There's no way the second movie has the same as high of a budget as that. And now Tom's pretty upset because Paramount Plus also is going to release the film 45 days after the film's theatrical release, which is said to have caused tension between Cruz and the studio. And the star has reportedly lawyered up because he basically owns the Mission Impossible franchise. So he's he makes a lot of the money off the gross of the film. So he'll definitely lose some gross because of that. You know, the same kind of thing happened not as severely with Scarlett Johansson where she was supposed to get back in and they released the same day. Yeah. 45 days obviously allows for, you know, most of the money to get made. That's what happens nowadays, but still. It's like, so we'll, we'll put into perspective, Batman's on its third week of release right now. Right now it's going into its fourth week. So it's like, say the Batman comes out on VOD next week, people are less likely to go to the theater this week to see it. Plus they release them at different times around the world. So yeah, it's exactly. probably just the start of the American release 45 days mm -hmm. from then on. And so the release dates are Mission Impossible 7 will be coming out July 14th, 2023. Can't wait for that next year. And then Mission Impossible 8 will be June 28th, 2024. And we still got Top Gun Top coming Gun. this so year. So we got three summers in a row of Tom Cruise. Let's go. <laughs> this is freaking great. Finally, like, we've been waiting oh, for more man, forever I for these. Tom's face on the big screen yeah, man, man. I, I can't it. wait it's been a while all right next up there's a big a24 movie trailer release called men now this comes from alex garland who wrote and directed annihilation and uh, ex machina and this film stars um oh my god i forgot her name jesse buckley jesse buckley who's nominated for an oscar this year she stars in the film it's a very trippy strange sci-fi twilight zoney kind of film it looks like because she stars opposite Rory Kinnear, who you've seen in a lot of things like the James Bond franchise, as well as the first episode of Black Mirror. He plays the, the prime minister of the UK. But in this film, he takes on the role of every person in a small village that she is um, staying in. So she, she sees his face everywhere with every person she interacts with. And it's like this, this strange take where it's not like she's like aware of it really. It's just it's she he's she's just letting it happen and it's just really great concept looks like a very intriguing film. Yeah, we're huge fans of Alex Garland. We love Ex Machina. Annihilation is also an excellent sci-fi movie, but he has like great horror elements in both of them. And I think that there are two trailers. There's the one with a lot of dialogue where we're kind of getting the situation set up, and there's a little teaser trailer where she's just like on a walk in the woods and she sees this long tunnel. And the way he ends the teaser trailer is there's this shadow figure silhouette of a person chasing after her, and it's just so creepy. Like that's how you do horror. That's yeah. That's high level horror. That's great stuff right there. That's building suspense and terror. Very cool. Rather than like a jump in front of the camera. Ah! <laughs> Good stuff. Uh, Paul Dano is writing a comic book for the Riddler called a Riddler called Riddler Year One for DC. This is going to be super cool. Can't wait for the release. I think they'll be doing multiple series, and every week they'll release one volume, which is pretty Very awesome. Very interesting. Very awesome. So since uh, Amazon bought MGM, their first big acquisition for um, distribution is with uh, Luca Guadagnino's next film, Bones and All, which stars uh, Timothy Chalamet and another cast in which they play cannibals. And so this will be an Amazon release, like an Amazon original. So you'll see it in theaters, and then you'll also see it on Amazon Prime pretty shortly after you it's released. bet your butt we're going to see this in theaters. Oh, yeah, we love Luca. Horror, cannibals, because, Luca, Timmy, let's go. Because Luca made Suspiria, the remake, and it's amazing. Plus, I mean, Calling By Your Name yeah. is one of my favorite um, movies oh in my the last God. 10 years. But he's so good with horror, too. It's, yeah. He's great at everything. Super talented director with great cast and a cool story. Let's go. Next up, we have a new MCU project is in development called Nova. It's a superhero who I'd never heard of until yesterday. Uh, and so in the comics, Richard Ryder is a teenage superhero who gets his powers after receiving a cosmic helmet from the hands of a dying member of the Nova Corps. Now, the Nova Corps were introduced to us in Gardens of the Galaxy. That's who, like, John C. Riley's character is part of the Nova Corps. And so that's where they showed up. And they're an elite force of the planet Xandar. Although there's never been a mention of superpowered helmets or superheroes named Nova in the MCU movies yet. We're curious to see how it will develop. We don't know if it's going to be a TV show or movie yet. But I'm down to see another cool superhero. Let's go. Let's go. Next. You guys stop saying let's go. <laughs> <laughs> that's today's theme. <laughs> there is uh, an announcement for Aziz Ansari's directorial debut film uh, called Being Mortal, which is based on the 2014 nonfiction book Being Mortal, Medicine and What Matters in the End by Atul Gawande. This will star Seth Rogen and Bill Murray, while Aziz, I believe, will be starring as the lead character, Gawande. Mm -hmm. yeah. So the book followed Gawande on his life and career as a surgeon in helping patients through medicine. And in the book, Gawande shared his thoughts on hospice and how medicine should be used to help ease the terminally ill into their passing. So it looks like like, like a, a heartwarming, um, dramatic 
comedic film and relatable. Yeah, I'm relatable. Sure. So because he did a great job producing, uh, show running and starring in Master of None. Crazy Rich Asians is the final bit of news. The sequel is being made. It sets Amy Wang as writer, and so a Crazy Rich Asians took in. A cool $238 million cool. at the global box office on a $30 million budget. That's a ton of cheddar cheese. So obviously Warner Brothers was going to produce some more films. And we, need, going- uh, we need the Crazy Rich Asians universe. So yeah, they're, they're <laughs> making a trilogy of Crazy Rich Asians films. And the first one, the second one will be called uh, China Rich Girlfriend. And then Rich People Problems will be the next one. And so that's the framework of the films, the exploration of class, culture, and modern romance in the presence of mega wealthy which will continue on the big screen. I'm sure the fans of the original will love those, I'm sure. I'm sure they'll be very successful as well, yeah. like the first one. Now, that wraps movie news this week. And remember, if you're a $10 or $25 tier patron, you have access to the Discord. Hang out with us tonight on our watch party for the Oscars. Starts at 5 p.m. Pacific time, 8 p.m. Eastern time. You figure out your time zone. I'm not going to figure that out for you. <laughs> you, just, you. Yeah, just, we have a lot of international patrons. So you yeah. hop in. It should yeah. be a good time. Hopefully, the Oscars won't be you know it'll be entertaining hopefully we'll you know see. bounce back from the last few they've had mm-hmm. and it should be a good time just chatting with everybody can't wait to see you all take care bye thanks so much for tuning in to raiders of the lost podcast be sure to subscribe if you're new hit the like button leave a comment find us on all audio streaming platforms spotify apple Podcasts, google Podcasts, wherever you listen to podcasts you can find us find us on twitter tiktok instagram raiders of the lost podcast be sure to check out one of these other videos right here for more content on our favorite films and breaking down all kinds of movie content. Thanks so much.